All right, this is gonna be a quick one. This was a impulse buy earlier this week. Um, I had to, when I was at work, I had to go up to the deer dealer, get some parts for the boss's bean planter and drove past the farm that I'd been by a thousand times before. And all of a sudden there's a bunch of crap sitting out in the front yard for sale. And these guys were sitting there and one of the things I've always wanted was an Oliver horse drawn plow to redo. And now I have two of them. I think. I know for sure that one is. This one is a mystery and we'll talk about it in a second. Um, this one, very easy to identify because it says, I don't know how well it'll show up on the camera. And it shows it pretty decent. It says Oliver right there. Uh, and it's a number 99. Although I've never seen it. I'm going to be the first to admit my uh, uh, realm of knowledge on stuff this old is very limited. I have, we we have very, well, we have no literature at all on stuff this old. Um, and to get into the books and stuff that the original, like, Oliver Sales stuff that talks about plows like this, you're getting into some pretty big money. Um because the stuff is scarce and very collectible and when guys do find it they pay dearly for it but i found it weird that it's it's a it's 0 0.99 not number 99 um because there's no n before the o i always thought it was i thought i always thought it was a number 99 um which is a fairly common plow as far as i know but it says oliver 99 there the joiner has, you can kind of see the chilled plow logo in it right there. It's got an Oliver Mall board. It's a 99SC. You can kind of make it out still. Um, almost gonna have to, almost, You'd almost have to get a crayon and try to make a rubbing of it, but I'm pretty sure it's definitely Oliver 99. And I, that's an S, and I, that's either a C or an O, but... Uh, and I can't remember if I found any other markings on it or not. Uh, there's something on the land side, but it's hard to... Oh, there's Oliver right there on the land side. The heel's actually in really nice shape. This, this whole plow is actually in fairly nice shape other than the point shot. But I've also never seen a plow this old with a three-piece point. Or a three-piece bottom. It's got your mall board, it's got a, it's got a shear... And then it's got a replaceable point, and it's a very, very, very aggressive replaceable point. Like, it's it's almost like a ripper tooth. Um, but uh, it's got the gauge wheel on it, which, if I recall correctly, this this gauge wheel with the, the pivot point and the slide for your depth adjustment, I believe that Oliver actually patented this, um, and I, it, I, I believe he held a patent on it for a period of time. Um, so if you see a horse drawn plow with a gauge wheel similar to this, it's, unless it's built after the patent ran out, there's a good possibility that it's an Oliver plow. So there's this one and then there's this one, which like I say, this is a mystery plow, kind of. Um, I bought it because it's got an Oliver bottom on it. It's upside down, but it's an Oliver 43, Oliver 43 SC. But the land side on it is, and it, I didn't, couldn't make it out until I got it home because when I was looking at them at the farm, they were wet and it's amazing how much water makes it where you can't read rust. There's this diamond logo right here, and it says down the center it says more M O O R E, and then across the top here it says plows, so more plows. Um, and did a little research. They were founded, and it was either 1900 or 1901 in Greenville, Michigan. Um, they made plows, some tillage equipment. Um, they act, there's a picture of the factory online at, for the time period. It was actually a pretty decent sized facility. And then I was talking to my buddy Dylan that I met down at Rantoul that is kind of a walking encyclopedia on plows. Mostly IH stuff, but he knows a little bit about everything. And he knew a little bit about more. And apparently 
they bought some international factories when they were consolidating so they apparently they owned an out owned a international factory owned an ex international factory not in chattanooga um oh right there o-l-i-v-e-r chill plow logo so this is indeed kind of like i thought this is indeed an oliver plow but back to the mower um apparently they were one of the last manufacturers of chilled plow wear parts um after all the blacksmith stuff went out of favor and you know ih developed the super chief and oliver had the radex and whatever deer called their bottoms and when everybody went to a more modern three-piece mall board with rolled steel and got away from the chilled um they were still making these forged plow parts so this was probably a more aftermarket land side for this plow but now that i got it rolled over and can actually see it and this was also when i picked it up all this these things had been sitting in a garden as uh, yard art and it, they were both all packed full of dirt down here so i couldn't even see that but that that answers it for me right there that's an oliver at least it's an oliver frog which probably means it's an oliver beam um so i wonder if that means since this is a 43 sc and that's a 99 sc on a 99 frog i wonder if that means that this one's a 43 i don't know how that works um it looks like there's a little bit of but did not mean to shove it over that hard it looks like there was something Oh, yep, there's a chilled plow logo right there. So it's an Oliver point. Can't tell if that says Oliver or if that's a part number. I guess it's just a part number. So, okay, well, now I am 100% convinced that this is an Oliver plow. It's just got an aftermarket land side on it. But it's kind of, I'd, I'd never heard of the Moore plow works until actually it was the Moore implement, Moore implement company. More, more plow and implement company, I think is what it was called. But you can go online and look them up. And there's a little bit of information about them. I guess there's a museum that's got some stuff on them. But it was kind of neat that it was a Michigan-based company. But anyhow, now that I've seen everything on the bottom of this, I am thoroughly convinced that this is actually an Oliver plow. And the thing that was throwing me off, this is obviously a much lighter beam than that 99. This whole plow is a lot lighter. And I didn't measure, but it looks like the mole board's actually a couple inches smaller, too. I wonder if this is a 12, and that might be a... Or this one might be a 10, and that one might be a 12. I haven't, I didn't throw a tape on them. Anyway, if you look at the beams, up here in the front, they're pretty much identical. But as you go back, this one's just got the single roll. And this one here kind of has a double roll in it it's got a roll here it's got a it's got a lip here and then you see i don't know how to describe it but you see what i'm talking about you got a you got a roll and then you got a roll and then you got your indent where this one's just a, a, a just a regular i-beam shaped beam um but the gauge wheel frame itself if you look at the profile of it is identical to this one but the gauge wheel, this one's smaller and it's a four spoke. This one's larger and it's a five spoke. But like I say, this this the 99 is just a bigger plow altogether. The beam's heavier. The frog's heavier. The land side's bigger. The draw bars are obviously completely different. Um, but that doesn't mean much. But now that I've seen the seen the stuff on the frog. I'm thoroughly convinced that this one's an Oliver. Unfortunately, I don't think Oliver ever stamped anything in their beams. If they did, I can't find it because I looked all over both of them. Unless it's hidden somewhere that you can't see it unless you know where it is, but I don't know why they... I mean, like, it's easy to identify an international beam because usually right in this area somewhere there's an IHC logo stamped in them. Like... That three bottom plow over there with the handle that's an ih plow and that's got ihc stamped in the beams 
and then the one over here facing this way that's an oliver three bottom orchard plow i've talked about both those plows before in a previous video but that one's got oliver cast into the back of the bottom so that one was easy to identify which i actually found while i was soil sampling at work la uh, a few weeks ago so i was sampling grapes um i found a complete version of that oliver plow sitting in a grape patch that i really really want but anyhow um so now that i've, I've rolled it over you and we all discovered that that's an owl actually an oliver plow together cause at first i was convinced it was a mower but now i'm now i'm 99.99 percent sure it's an oliver with a mower land side on it so the goal for these i want to do a uh, full restoration fully disassemble them get square head hardware blast them paint them put them back together get handles for them um there's plenty of amish down here in napanee so shouldn't be hard getting plow handles um but get everything painted varnish up the handles get some stencils made so you can put oliver on the plow handle shelly can make stencils on her cricket so that'll be easy so these might be a, a winter feel-good project. Or I might dink with them this summer, you never know. But uh, I've, always, I've always wanted a, a horse-drawn Oliver plow to restore and have to display. They're, they're obviously, the, once they're done, they ain't going to go in the yard because I ain't going to put all that work into them and make them nice to turn around and have them rot again. They'll go in the barn somewhere where they're safe. But uh, actually, it'd be cool to get one all done up and then donate it to Floyd County because I don't remember if they have an Oliver horse drawn plow there or not. But anyhow, this was just a quick one to show off my purchase. Needed them like a hole in the head, but the guy was asking. He wanted 150 a piece for him. I was like, I, I got home from work and I called up there. I was like, okay you give me a deal if i just buy them both me him ha and he said well 250 and i said yeah i guess i can do that so for especially at 99 with the complete joiner and a good mall board and a good caster and everything that alone was probably worth 250 bucks because all that literally all that thing needs to needs to be a working plow is the handles everything else is there and same thing with this there's no witness marks on the beam anywhere like this one like there's no wear marks or rub marks where this thing looks like it ever had a joiner on it so chances are it was just used as is so same thing it's got all the mounting hardware for the handles everything's there it just needs a set of handles so i don't think for 250 bucks i did too bad there's amish around here that pay more than that for those so it's actually kind of a cool place it's it, it was weird that he had two oliver plows because he was actually a john deere collector he's actually the guy's dad his dad passed away several years ago but the uh the old timer was interested in john deere bees that was his thing and uh he got lucky and get started getting into collecting back when you could still buy stuff cheap because nobody wanted it and he had three fully restored bo lindemans a br on full steel two bi's um when i was sitting in there there was one more what was the other oh no there was the two bi's there was one in the corner had an old john, had a really nice original john deere van brunt drill had a 1925 john deere spoker d with the original flywheel still on it all these things were fully rest like they were all older like 1990s restorations but by 1990 standards they were very 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 high quality restorations i mean these things these tractors were immaculate they wouldn't even need a re they wouldn't even need to freshen up they were like automotive paint with clear coat i mean these tractors were beautiful and they're all for sale actually i think he said the br was sold and one of the bi's was sold and he had a bunch of bunch of parts too but it was it was kind of neat walking in that barn said none of that stuff had been touched in 15 years because that's how long his dad had been gone so they're working on getting it all running and selling or running to sell because he said he was 
he, he his, his son that I bought this stuff off of, he had to be knocking on 70. And he said he was just too old to be maintaining stuff like that. It's kind of sad that they didn't have any grandkids because, I mean, there's... Between the three B.O. the three B.O. Lindemans and that Spoker D alone are worth a big chunk of change. And then you throw in the two B.I.s and the B.R. Especially the B.R. being on full steel. And then he had a row crop, uh, unstyled B row crop on full steel too, but that was his uh, yard ornament. But it was probably still a restorable tractor, it was just stuck. So anyhow, oh, and while I'm standing right here, I've been meaning to ask about or see if somebody was interested in these because I'm tired of kicking them around, but I can't bring myself to throw them out. These are a pair of joiners. They'll fit either a Ferguson or a Ford Ford Dearborn plow. Um, the wraparound joiners that bolt on the Coulter frames. They're an AO or no. P3762, but they're, they're, uh, same thing. I was talking to Dylan about them, and he's, he's seen them before, and they're, they are, they are factory Ferguson wraparound joiners for a Ferguson plow, but they will fit a Ford, too. So, if anybody's interested in these, make me a decent offer to make them worth getting rid of. I mean, I just want to see them go to a good home. I found them in a shed out back when we were cleaning this place up. They were buried almost fully in dirt. And I couldn't bring myself to throw them in the scrap because they're complete and really not in that bad of shape. So if anybody's interested in those, let me know. So anyway, didn't mean for this to be 16 minutes long. So with that being said, that's it for this one. And we'll catch you guys on the next one.